and um, I, I'll be looking in my mailbox for an invitation. I'd like to come up at least to see one. And, the, yeah, and that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, our award uh, this year will be on February 20th at Hallis Hall, where the Bears uh, uh, practice and, and, and train. Uh, they're in the, it's the National Football Foundation uh, sponsored ceremony and event, and uh, a lot of people will, will be honored. To, in addition to the uh, Fred Mitchell Award winner, will be giving out scholarships to. Uh, high school senior football players, uh, as well as recognizing people like uh, Jim Delaney, the commissioner of the Big Ten, and uh, several several other people. So we're, we're looking forward to that. And as far as the uh, Fred Mitchell Award, there's a website, fredmitchellaward.com, that has more details about uh, what we're all about. Coach, we need to put you in touch with uh, Coach Saban because I, I do believe that we're looking for a backup kicker here at the University of Alabama. I'm ready. <laughs> well, Co- <laughs> well, Coach, thanks a lot, and I look forward to talking to you real soon. We want to try to teach the parents of student athletes what is it going to take to get your student athlete scholarship, consideration, grants, loans, the whole nine yards. What do they have to do from their freshman year on to qualify? And uh, right now, Marlon, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Glad to be here. Well, we're glad to have you, man. Anybody that's out here to help these kids um, mm-hmm. uh, is on our team. And, and uh, you have an interesting story. I'm going to let you share that with people. But tell me how you got to where you are today uh, from the background that you shared with me. Okay. Well, um, for many that know, know me and know my history, in which there's going to be a, um, a newspaper article that will be out probably within the next week or two. Um, I was a uh, ward of the court from the age of 11 to 21, grew up in juvenile services, foster care, uh, shelter homes, group homes. Um, So I was sort of a rare story, a rare case, but neither here nor there. Um, The one thing about myself was that I I was a very uh, humble youth, Mm -hmm. growing up in an area that was popularized by the HBO special, The Wire. If anybody has ever seen oh, that. Oh, definitely. Um, I watch it now. I watch the reruns okay, now. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of the things that's been going up in the Pennsylvania area as well. Um, you know, I had, to, I had to run for my life. And uh, when, I, when my mom decided to put me away in placement, I was given a second chance. And so, you know, being under the Department of Human Services and Social Services um, and Juvenile Services as well, I was able to to have access to a lot of resources, uh, a lot of mentoring, um, a lot of counseling services, uh, a lot of student support services in which um, I use them to my advantage, Mm -hmm. in which a lot of students, they need to be able, they need to learn that that's very important and necessary, that they take advantage of the opportunities that's that's being handed to them. And, you know, since I I decided that I was not going to be a a spectator, but I was going to be a dictator of my life, I decided to not sit on the sidelines, and I decided to, uh, you know, go to school and, and, and take advantage of the programs and the student leadership, and I just worked my way through the ranks and, and realized that uh, I was athletically gifted uh, growing up in one of the greatest basketball meccas. You know, that Baltimore, Pennsylvania, Ohio region is, is, is just phenomenal with no doubt. talent just spewing all over the place in basketball and football, and I grew up uh, in an era where I had, you know, mentors and, and, and people that I idolized, you know, like uh, Sam Cassell and, and a few others. And, uh, you know, one of the great legends, Lenny Moore, who I remember speaking to me as a young kid while I was living in an institution, inspired me to want to use my athletic gifts to help to propel and get me through high school. And because I was able to do that using sports and using student leadership, I was able to fuse t- the, the two together which helped to leverage myself because I wasn't great. I wasn't a great academic student, mm-hmm. but I was able to understand that by using what God gave me, my 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 potential, my talents, my treasures, and my gifts, that you know those were intelligence as well. Which they don't. A lot of times they don't teach in school. Mm-hmm. That you know, rather than the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, that there are other intelligences like kinesthetic intelligence and linguistic intelligence and a personal intelligence. I had the intuition to understand that I had social skills, which a lot of students are going to need. They need to learn how to be able to talk to people, to be articulate. And I was able to understand that I was very gifted in that area, and I just used it to my advantage. And I was able to get my social, social worker and those psychologists and people 
that wanted to help me, I got them on my, on my side, on my team, and I used them to my advantage. Mm -hmm. And that's how I was able to get into college. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, now, you mentioned that, that you, you were an athlete. How did sports um, give you that aha moment that you knew that by playing sports, you'd have the opportunity to cultivate the types of relationships that would take you to the next level? When did you have that aha moment? I had the aha moment when, in my ninth grade year, I was uh, privy to playing varsity on, on a basketball team. Uh, I, was, I was dunking the basketball at 12, 13 years old. So I knew that I had, uh, my kinesthetic intelligence level was, was very, it was, it was way beyond average. And I, I was able to see that that premier gift that I had, uh, having, being, celebrated and not being tolerated mm -hmm. and being applauded for that gift and ability despite the fact that I was living in institutions and, and despite the fact that I was a CD, CD student, I, I had that aha moment. I was able to realize that this gift could make room for me and I used it and being applauded, having, having uh, students and having parents come to my games even when I lived in group homes and stuff coming to my, great, my games, writing the number 44 on banners and stuff, holding it up, and treat me like I was a superstar. That's when I realized at that moment that it was my ticket. It was my golden ticket into getting into college. Man, I tell you what, it, 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 you motivated me so much by what you say because we were kind of um, in the same area. I mean, I, I, I live with my parents, but Going into my senior year of, of high school, I had absolutely no college scholarship offers. Mm -hmm. And my mom, God rest her soul, sent me to Ohio State University for a summer camp where I met Jack Tatum, mm -hmm. the assassin, mm -hmm. and John Hicks. Mm -hmm. And after beating them both in a foot race, mm -hmm. they asked me, well, wh where was I going to college? Yeah. And I said, Westinghouse. And they thought I was talking about Westinghouse College. I was talking mm -hmm. about Westinghouse appliance manufacturers <laughs> <laughs> because I had no hope of going to college. And they said, oh, no oh no, you're going to go to college, man, and we're gonna show you. So they introduced me to all of their professors. Mm -hmm. They taught me public speaking, mm -hmm. how, and just like you said, how mm -hmm. to communicate. That's right. Because that's where so many kids miss out on it. When you can't look a person in the eye, mm -hmm. and in two minutes, like we always use in ProStart, a two minute resume mm -hmm. will tell them how you're gonna make a substantial contribution to their common goal. That's right. In two minutes, you gotta be able to do that. Mm -hmm.